What is up guys, Speed here, and today we're going to be following Iceberg's Murana. You might be asking Speed, why Murana? Why are we looking at this hero? Well, Murana is actually one of the best mid laners of the patch, and I'm pretty convinced this will stay the case. In 7.27a, MKB was nerfed. It was given a recipe. However, I still think it's one of the best items in the game. So before we get into the actual video, let's take a quick look at the stats. It's 4,650 gold. That gives you 42 damage. Pretty respectable. 35 attack speed. Also respectable. But most importantly, it grants each attack a 75% chance to pierce through evasion and deal 100 bonus magical damage. So not only is this item good against evasion, it's also good against BKB. Because currently, as this video is posted, it still works through BKB. So frankly, MKB is an uncounterable item. I guess you could buy a pipe to help deal with the procs, but nonetheless, it works really well with Murana. Being able to proc so much with the combination of her attack speed bonus from Leap and her level 15 talent, 65 Leap attack speed, is really just a fantastic combo. So we'll be watching Iceberg absolutely stomp with Murana, and let's get into Well, also like the video. By the way, guys, we reached 2.5k thousand likes i should have made the goal much higher i should have made it like five thousand i don't know why i thought you guys wouldn't get the 2.5k likes on that guess the rank episode i think we have like four thousand right now which is awesome thank you so much and uh yeah let's aim for that as well in this video i'd appreciate it if we could also get to 2.5k likes once again and let's get into it and i want to mention two more things very briefly if you guys are either playing specter or Quap, because you watched some of my videos recently where i talked about these heroes but nonetheless if you want to learn more about specter and you want to have basically a mini coaching session about it I'm doing a VOD analysis of a Spectre player very recently. It's actually going to be a pretty high MMR player. I believe he's Divine, High Divine. And I'm going to be posting that session. Well, it's not a coaching session, but I do a video a coaching him. And it will help you as well, right? That's going to help you. So go sign up to the website if you're trying to get to the next level, right? If you're trying to learn a carry role, learn Spectre, one of the best heroes of the patch right now, go check that out. Also, I'll be doing a quad version as that right now as well. So if you're interested in learning meta heroes, learning about the top strategies from your boy Speed, and of course, other pros that we have, uh, over there yeah go sign up it's it's pretty cheap i know i already hear the comments speed it's not cheap i <laughs> i know I, I i i understand if you're in a bad situation i wish you the best but just as a heads up game leap subs actually guarantee that you'll make a hundred thousand dollars per week so just keep that in mind all right getting right into it so marana in the mid lane he's against a storm spirit not too bad of a matchup right it's it's one of those matchups where you have a very clear attack range advantage and you're gonna see him immediately put that to use and it's an important thing to note on marana because your attack range is so high, you can often punish opponents, whether or not they're melee, a hero like Templar, a hero like Luna, or a Storm in this case. The next thing we have to note is that it actually goes to arrow the range creep. Anytime there's a situation where your range creep could get denied, you should just arrow it. You can even arrow it at the start of the lane. You do have to keep in mind that they will that will actually push the wave into the enemy's tower. So as long as you're okay with that, it's fine. A lot of pros do that, especially in the side lanes when Ron is being played as a support. Following that up at level two, he takes a point in Starfall. And I think the reason for this is he doesn't feel threatened at all by the Storm Spirit. It's very unlikely that the Storm Spirit ever comes close to killing him. Uh, and therefore he goes for two points in the Star Storm. He's really trying to max out on Harass. Now, sure, Leap could be good for killing people as well, right? It closes the gap. But I think how Iceberg sees this matchup is that Storm's gonna buy a fair amount of regen, has mangoes, has a self. He would rather chip him down with two points in Star Storm. Star Storm scales fantastically well. It does go up by 25 mana, which is a bit rough, but he's gotta stick to deal with that, and it doubles in damage from 75 to 150. And if you're lucky enough, well, if you get close to your opponent and you can cast Star Storm when they are the closest unit, which is how Star Storm works, uh, you actually can do an absurd amount of damage. Next up at level 4, you want to take a point in leap. You just want to make sure you have the ability to have mobility at some point or another. So as you're going to see, he's doing a good job spamming his starfall overall with the help of the stick and regen. He's able to zone out the storm pretty hard. You can see that the CS does not necessarily favor him yet, yet and generally never will against storm spirit. But the most important factor is the denies. Obviously, storm spirit is just going to use his Q and his E to rack up CS on jungle creeps. But as you can see with the net worth, it's not even close, and that's really the benefit of Mirana. If you're against a weaker laning hero such as Storm or, or a low range hero, you can just hit them a lot, throw arrows at range creeps, and then spam your Q once it hits level 2, and you're kind of just going to dumpster. And you can see that what Iceberg's doing here, he's not even pushing the lane, right? He actually spends a lot of time trying to keep it back to the best of his ability, uh, gets this range creep CS, denies out another melee, is even basically diving the tower here. And the reason why you can do this is, let's say Phoenix TP's in. Who cares? Who cares? You just leap away. Like, what, what is this guy going to do? Throw a couple of fire spirits? <laughs> I love that, then I do it again. Oh, he didn't do it again. Now, hopefully you guys see the point, right? Kind of just do whatever you want. So 
even the lift comes out and I'm surprised he's not eating here. I think he's going for the arrow into the E and it gets the kill. So if you guys aren't familiar with Murano's Q, uh, a lot of people do not understand it. Basically what it does is it locks on to the person closest to you. So it hits in an AOE, it procs twice. Number one, right after he throws the arrow, you'll see it here. He's going to leap in, casts it. It hits everything in this AOE. You can see the little like uh, cloud hits everything in that AOE. And then whatever's closest, which obviously in this case is the Phoenix because there's nothing else in it gets hit again, right? They get a hit again by a second tick. And that's why it kills the Phoenix. So basically what you can note is that let's say Starstorm did 100 damage. You could effectively do 175 damage to one target because the second tick of it does 75% of the original. All right, now upcoming here, you're just going to see Iceberg work. This enemy team, he just works them. Literally, literally, he's employing them. It's pretty impressive. Just took Tusk out of unemployment. But as you can see, hits the arrow, lands the double star fall, secures the kill and storm doesn't even bother chasing my man knows hey i'm not level six he's just gonna leap away and that's the power of marana a lot of people and i know a lot of mid players they love to play for that outplay factor right they love to be the type of guy who gets a kill lives on 200 health then solo kills to support whoever extends and marana is so good at that right you, you have so much turn potential with the high damage q arrow and of course leaps Following this up, he actually walks back to base. Quick little side note about Murana. Your hero actually does have a pretty hard time sustaining your mana. Um, there are some players who do go bottle on Murana. Iceberg opts to not do that here. And so instead, what he does is simply walk back to base and then TP back out. So just keep that in mind, guys. If you're playing no bottle Murana and you go the treads, like stats build that I recommend every single game, just sometimes you can add a bottle to it, then what you want to do is walk back to base, right? Push out the lane, spam your Q on the opponent. You can jungle, right? Try to get some neutral items once it hits minute seven and have no problem walking back to base. In this next fight, we're going to see a really important lesson from Iceberg that is really just focused on, you know, not being afraid, not panicking in fights. This is one of the hardest things in Dota because keeping track of all the spells that are casted and your HP pool and how much damage people do based on their level is very difficult. But let's look at what's about to happen here. So number one, we need to note that Iceberg has a Fairy Fire, Potential Strength, Treads, and a Wand. He also has about two lead charges, right? Only one currently, but it's about to have two. So he ends up getting gone on by this Tiny from the back line, and Storm zips on him as well. Now Storm makes the major misplay of pulling, <laughs> pulling the Illusion, but even if he did pull the Marana, the Marana still would not get bursted. You can see he instantly swaps the Strength Treads to prevent the gank from actually doing anything, and he doesn't leap right away. He actually doesn't leap at all most players would 100 percent leap here right of course because they're like oh i'm getting gone on like three people i have to but the reality is with this fairy fire huge wand uh, and, and strength treads he actually is able to stay into the fight which secures the kill onto the phoenix because the phoenix overextends the storm nearly dies and the tiny also is dropped to low hp they don't get him at the end and they actually hardcore outplays iceberg there <laughs> gets worked that's by the way why you need stats guys if you don't have stats marana just insta dies is terrible Moving on from there, you're going to see that Iceberg doesn't make any rotations this game, and it's a pretty simple reason why, in my opinion. You're not particularly good at ganking Void, it's not like they can set up Arrow, right? Maybe if they have a Bane, they could do a Sleep into an Arrow combo, but in this case, it's a very difficult play. It's not like Lift is very long, Sprout is unreliable, and therefore, I like the fact that until the 10 minute mark here, when his team completely collapses on top, he actually doesn't make any rotations. Now, getting into the fight here, though, he's going to... Actually, well, he leads with his ultimate, goes for the arrow, right? He saw the enemy team chasing. That is the best way to land arrows in Dota. Wait for the enemy team to chase, follow it up, land the arrow. Now, he tries to leap in and goes for an immediate starfall. Unfortunately, isn't able to get it right away. Eventually does. Does an absurd amount of damage from the tusk. Takes a step back, right? Considered kiting out. Realizes he doesn't have to. Gets gone on by the storms, which is the strength treads. Doesn't pop his fairy fire too early. Remember, fairy fires are, and, and wands are generally best used uh, for baiting. And Phoenix here goes in up out of a straight line, right? It's a pretty hard for the area for the Phoenix to actually juke. And this is a great area to actually hit an arrow. Secures it, get the kill, and now they're playing fast paced. On top of that, he actually TBs right back to base. And this is how you be efficient on Marana. It's actually how I wish you guys would all play Marana. Push in the mid lane, use Starfall to push it in and to kill a couple nearby camps and only show up the fights that are clearly developing. I really don't recommend going for one-off pickoffs on Marana. Can it be okay with your ultimate? Yeah, it can be all right, right? Maybe you have some particularly good setup with Arrow, then you definitely can consider rotating. But for the most part, stay mid, focus on your timings and work to this level 10 talent that actually gives you 150 health, which is in my opinion, absurdly high. 
Alright, next up here is a very advanced decision when it comes to leap management. So he decided to use 2 to secure the kill onto the Phoenix here. Which, honestly, it's alright. Obviously, he uses the leap attack speed to get the kill very quickly. With the help of the Blitz Knuckles and all these stats, his attack speed is actually sky high. But the problem is now he's completely out of leap charges. So what does he do? Well, he just completely runs away. Even though this, this Void is actually dropping pretty low and it looks like a decent arrow opportunity, he's taking no chances. A lot of players would look at this and they would just rage. They would say, oh my god, Marana, why aren't you doing anything? Guys, why can't he do anything here? The Storm and the Tusk that are both full HP and out of vision are going to insta-kill him. He is a wet noodle. So easy to kill if he does not, and I repeat, if he does not have leap charges, right? He'll just die so easily. So instead he goes all the way out of the fight and then immediately goes back to jungling. And you basically can do this in your games as well. Of course you can. Use your leap charges in the fight, and then spend some time jungling to make sure you can get them back. While it sounds extremely self-explanatory, I don't think this is something that most players would actually do in the game, or think to just make a rule of thumb. And now, starting here, is where the fun begins. MKB is online at the 17 minute mark, and this is about, if I was you guys, what I would strive for as well. 1730 is definitely a bit early, after all he's 7 and 1 with 4 assists which is a very respectable score, 106 CS at 1742, uh, when he's being that active, is also very respectable, considering he doesn't have to be the win condition, they have a Spectre after all. And therefore, you know, I would recommend you aim for an 18 to 19 minute MKB. Any later than that, I think you're just not farming enough, or you're taking really bad engagements, it's one or the other. On top of that, here we go, MKB online, and immediately this faceless void who cannot be killed, well, uh, can be killed, so he's gonna stay far away, uses a little bit of synergy with this Rubik. Honestly, the Rubik made a bit of a mistake by throwing the Void into the arrow, right? It kind of lessened the distance. I think the arrow would have made it anyway. But nonetheless, with the MKB procs, he's able to kill him down much faster than you would expect because it completely disregards the, what is it? 16 armor of the Faceless Void, and they pick up the kill. On top of that, he gets absurdly lucky. Guys, if you're playing Marana and you're playing in the mid lane, make sure you pick up the Grove Bow at all costs. This item is absurd with MKB. Obviously, the attack speed is fantastic. The attack range is great as well. But of course, the most important part uh, that I think a lot of people forget about in this case with an MKB is the it reduces magical resistance by 12%, meaning each one of your procs does 12 more damage. And finally, to just about end off this video, we're going to look at a really nice Roshan play. And I know you're saying speed 22 minutes in and the video. Well, actually, yeah, this game only goes 27 minutes. They kind of put on the works after they take Rosh. Remember, guys, if you're trying to win a match at Dota 2, you got to kill Roshan. So first things first, he doesn't have BKB, so therefore he can't frontline. When he does have BKB, he could get more in the fray, right? I wouldn't say they have a particularly great way of killing him through BKB. Yes, I understand they have Tag Team Punch and Chrono. However, however, he has the Moonlight Shadow to avoid that coming out easily. And the Void isn't particularly farmed. He only has a Battle Fury and a Yasha, so... Right, he doesn't do a particularly huge amount of damage yet. Yet. But nonetheless, fight breaks out. You notice that he doesn't overcommit for the Roshan. I see players do this all the time. I don't care if it's uh, 1 tenth HP, half HP, 8 tenths HP... Let it go. Just step out of the pit and take a clean fight. Unless you are convinced you can kill it, right? So first things first, he leaps out to the side here, goes on the storm. The storm was low on mana as is, so it's a good initiation. And even if he doesn't kill the storm, what's going to actually happen is that now the storm has to burn more mana and is completely useless in this fight. So by using that one leap charge on the storm, he's completely zoned him out. Next up here, he does not see this phoenix TPing in. That is just a replay bug. Comes around the side, nearly finishes off the tusk. And uh, yeah, it's just going to leap in to kill the egg. Marana is notably a Phoenix counter. People would even pick Marana support, just counter Phoenix in general, purely because with the leap attack speed, you have no problem killing egg. Follows it up with a nice little arrow onto the faceless void, which they secure another kill on, and they're eventually able to finish off the nice little Roshan. All right, this next upcoming play here is... Oh, beautiful, don't you? Beautiful. So they go on the tusk here. He gets snowballed on. Uh, obviously, nothing to worry about. The tusk does have a blink, but look at this. The Prophet goes for a Sprout onto the Storm Spirit. He follows it up with an arrow. However, the Yules comes out, but it don't matter. Perfect timing by Iceberg. And you guys know, this This is why my man is going to steal your girl. Have you guys ever seen a picture of Iceberg? He is jacked. My man is huge. He even played in TI. Actually, he played in TI-8 when OG had their first uh, first little upset. I actually was at that uh, TI. Guys, if you're at that TI, let me know in the comments. It was so good. It's, so, it's the only TI I've ever been to. It was like... The best experience of my life, so fantastic, like, 
Oh god, Iceberg, he's an absolute Chad though, and you can just see that's a Chad arrow right there. <laughs> Alright, but thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you can see why Moran is so powerful right now. Do keep in mind that after your MKB, you're gonna want to go for a BKB. Please just go these items every single game. It will always be good. I do it like literally always will be good. After that, you can go a satanic, you could go Scotty, you could go Butterfly if they're all physical damage. You have a couple options, but generally what I recommend is going for some sort of defensive item, which is why I said Scotty, Satanic, Butterfly. Uh, you do plenty of damage with the leap attack speed talent at level 15, which he clearly is going to take, and the MKB, you do damage. Damage is not the problem. It's not the problem. It's just whether or not you can stay alive. You only have 1800 HP, so you die to nukes very easily. Obviously, that's why you pick up the BKB, but still, it can be a bit of a problem when the BKB runs short, or if people try to go on you initially and uh, potentially burst you down. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, uh, please do like and subscribe to help our channel grow. And of course, I'll see you on the next one, brothers. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dodo or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me, but I recommend you sign up to GameLink.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there and generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're gonna see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.